What Happens in the Woods is a true crime podcast. We discuss events that are often violent in nature. Listener's discretion is advised. Well, welcome. We are celebrating the official one year potiversary anniversary birthday. All the celebrations today, February 21st, marks our one year of being a podcast. Officially. Officially. Yay. Yay. We had a good year. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully many, many more. So this is our second recap. We're going to talk about some things that happened in our second season. And we also want to remind everybody we've got that giveaway going on. So please make sure you are listening to us talk as usual. We're going to give you a code word, a catchphrase. I don't know. What are we calling it? Yes. Phrase. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to drop that in some, at some point while we're talking today and you will then send us a DM either on Instagram or Facebook with that word. So keep your ears peeled people. There's $50 Bryce and he upped that ante $50 Amazon gift card. <laughs> now you're regretting shit, aren't you? No. Okay. All right. It's for everybody out there. It's for everybody. Everybody. All right. So just be on the on the listen for it. Uh so season two was quite the season. Yeah. I we yeah. We think we really we changed some things again. <laughs> changed the way we did intros. Had uh had some very long episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, what else changed? The room, again, our setup. Yeah. I am on my fourth microphone, I think. Third, fourth. Something like that. Yeah. We're evolving, we're learning, we're doing shit. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to ask you the same questions. Do you, do you remember? Do I remember what? Do you remember the questions? No. <laughs> that was last episode. <laughs> All right. So what was the favorite episode that we recorded from this season? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I'm kind of biased. Biased to what? Because I actually get to do things now. Well, like what? Like the intros. What do you mean like the intros? Oh. I get to edit and put them together and pick musics. Yeah. I get yeah. to pick the music. Yes. I've I've loosened the reins on the creative control. <laughs> uh okay, but that you gotta answer. What's your favorite episode we recorded? Um probably Bob the Baker. Yeah? Yeah. Why is that your favorite? I think it was just the way it was all, the way it was put together, like the whole thing. I don't know. Yeah? Yeah. The way that, you know, the intro was, the, the courtroom, oh, with yeah. the actual prosecutor. Yeah. Um, But then the way you told the story as, you know, he hunted women down, you know, just the retelling of it. I don't know. I like the way that it was put together. Okay. All right. But I also like the story. Yeah, you know what I mean. Is yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we don't like the story. <laughs> the story sucks, uh, but yeah. the tell retelling of the story. Yes. Yeah, I would have to say my favorite ones to do were the the poisoning, the cyanide, Kate, both of them. Yeah. Episode yeah both? one and two. Oh. Just the connection of it, like what was going on with all of that. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that you had a copycat from a copycat, yeah. <laughs> like you didn't fucking learn the first time. Yeah. Nobody, nobody learned the fir first time. It, it sounded like a good idea because it was in Reader's Digest to 
you know, oh, well, I can get away with it too. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was probably my favorite. It was just, I don't know, it sounded like something you'd, you'd watch on a Dateline episode or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. What was the most unbelievable or the craziest case that we, we covered in this season? The George Waterfield. Yeah. Russell. Yeah, George Waterfield Russell. Just yeah. because he didn't come from like a horrible childhood. Like Not parents, the worst. Yeah. No, and like his parents were very well to do. They were, yeah. And he he was I don't know, he just he didn't have bad circumstances. But he turned Not out Not the that worst. Way. No, and yeah. I mean, but like everybody kept giving him a pass. Yeah, he was just this likable guy who knew everybody and and really was able to just, you know, squeeze right into any situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I I mean, you're right. His his past wasn't that bad. Yeah, he didn't. You know, it wasn't yeah. like Gary Ridgway or Yates where his, you know their moms were demeaning and you know uh, yeah, uh, just you know. Ridiculed them to, you know, embarrassment, it, you know, and, and they weren't, they didn't have, he didn't have abusive parents and it was just the way he turned out and just how bad yeah. his crimes were, like his scenes were. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But, you know, it, but it, it went to show to break and entering peeping Tom turned to break and entering and then just, you know, his. Uh, yeah. The theft after that. And then the progression to, yes, the progression. to sex crimes and yes. yeah. And murder. Yeah, I I guess he is one of the ones where the you know the the holy grail that you find with with all of these serial killers you always look for these these common things were yeah. they bedwetters did how was their relationship with their parents and did they harm animals yeah. as children and you know were there brain injuries head injuries he just didn't these all fit things any of that. he didn't really fit that much of that the only thing that I I really found that with him what could be a a factor was that his his mom and his his essentially his family just left him be let him be yeah, yeah they, they really weren't present. they weren't present yeah. exactly they were not uh you know it wasn't necessarily a loving welcoming environment that he was in he yeah. was basically tolerated but also, as he got older, the group of people that he hung out with got younger. Yeah. And that was definitely why, you know, I I didn't really understand that. Other than it's easier to manipulate, you know, younger people. Yeah, I guess. To get them to do what you want them to do. Yeah. And go along with shit. And if you're the cool older person that's supplying the drugs, you, everybody wants to be with you. You know, everybody wants to hang out with the guy who's buying alcohol for the the underage drinkers. Well, so, all right. Yeah. Yeah, that he's definitely a crazy all crazy right. case. Be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> I'll tell you that what reminds me of <laughs> yeah. Matthew McConaughey. And- I guess I'm in dazed and confused. That's who that, that guy. No, is. very much so. That is that is totally that character. Be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> That's not a good impression. Though. Sorry, <laughs> but a, a a a for effort. All right, I tried. <laughs> okay, uh, what's the case that stuck with you long after recording? When we finished recording. What what kept popping up in your mind? Um. Yeah, I, don't, it, I would have to say again, Waterfield Russell, George Waterfield Russell, just because of the way yeah. he posed uh, and staged all his 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 murder scenes. Yeah, yeah, it was it was very extra. Yeah, yeah, there was, and you know, for the murders, obviously there was a lot of break ins that he did. Yeah, I mean, break ins, cat burglary, keeping and, toms. Yeah, that and, those was hundreds. Yeah. But the to, he only had the three. He only had the three. He didn't have a high murders. body count that right. we know of. That we know of. But yeah, in, in the eccentric way that he posed and set up the whole scene, 
right and was just like fucking with investigators because you know he was basically symbolizing you know he had a bunch of symbolism in his right his scenes right which was just like he's definitely calling out for attention oh yeah for sure yeah yeah i i would have to say the one that probably stuck with me the most was uh after we discussed it was um Wayne Adam Ford yeah yeah just because I I I was I was less than a mile away from that torso when it was found yeah and it it brought up I kind of mentioned it in the in the episode that it me researching it brought up nostalgia things from that time yeah. of you know things that I hadn't even thought about in probably since that time you know since 1990s and and it didn't stop after we were you know had finished recording i i kept would kept thinking of things after that for probably a good month it just kept thinking of things yeah yeah that's that's definitely one of the ones that um i because i (laughs) was so close to where they found that torso yeah I don't, I, that's another one that I, I just will think about for the rest of my life. Yeah. This, that was a, that was a crazy case. Yeah. Um, all right. Which one shocked you the most? Hmm. I would have to say the, the last one, Nick, uh, Nick Hackney, Nick Hackney, the preacher man. Yeah. Just because of the web just how intertwined everything was and how he kept getting away with it and just talking, talking everybody into things. It's crazy. Yeah. That, that has to be my, um, and I almost didn't do that one. I, I, I debated on, on doing a completely different case. Why is that? Well, because I, I felt like I was going to be biased on um i i grew up where my grandparents were ministers Mm -hmm. and there were a lot of things that happened behind closed doors in churches that and i'm not saying you know i'm not i'm not speaking on the part of my grandparents i'm i'm saying things that i saw um you know in depth into people's lives you start to know people's business that should be private that you wouldn't normally know. So, you know, being in that behind the scenes kind of frame of mind, um, and seeing the inner workings of, of how a, a church works with relationships and people and, and just, you know, everybody's private business, things that go down. I didn't know that I could be impartial and not, just completely go off <laughs> the rails on it. Um, because I, I, that actually has led me to not really want to take part of you, you, like religion. Yeah. <laughs> that experience. So I, I didn't want that to come through when I was speaking of it because I, I still greatly appreciate that everybody has their own views and religious beliefs and you're entitled to that that's the beauty of of it religion is for everybody um no matter what it is that you celebrate and 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 believe in and i would never want anybody to be turned away from that just because of something that i said either there are a lot of horrible people in a lot of different positions and unfortunately sometimes they get put in positions of power and that's exactly what his case was yeah yeah, the manipulative mastermind that he was is what kills me. And I'm still angry to this day that I share a viewpoint with him on prison reform. Yeah. I, I that pisses me off mm-hmm. <laughs> so much. But it, it's not the only opinion, you know, he's not the only person of course who spoke on this. So I kind of had to tone that back too. But yeah, I I was hard I really thought that it was going to be hard to remain impartial yeah with that one just because of personal experience i guess so yeah all right what case did you wish you, had, you hadn't heard from this season I, I don't i don't know you don't have one 
No. Uh, you know what? Maybe the Lady Monica one, just because she killed that guy. You know how they... You yeah. Know, he, he was a vet. He served our country. He survived wars. Survived then, fucking Vietnam. Yeah, and, and then and to come on the front home, lines. Come home and just these people that want to take things from him. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, him... It, n- he wasn't the only victim. He was no. a murder victim. Yeah. But, you know, the the woman who was being fleeced that whole time. Oh, yeah. The brainwashing. Yeah. yeah. Just all of that. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was a rough one. I would have to say Robert Hansen. I, I kind of wish that I hadn't come across that one. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, his making, you know, hunting down those women. Yeah. The I've I've I'm from Alaska. I've lived in Alaska and I've lived in Alaska in the winter time and I can't imagine being chased through frozen tundra naked. Yeah. So and, I was gonna say, yeah, and blindfolded. With no clothes on. Yeah. And knowing that you're not gonna go anywhere. There's no place to go. Yeah. And and what's gonna happen? I I that one, yeah, I kinda I could have done without all of that. But also, um, the special, the bonus episode that we did, the Australian Christopher Wilder. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> the fucking, yeah, just every day a new victim, torturing, killing, dropping bodies. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was, that was a rough one to get through too. Kind of, kind of could have done without all of that. And especially, I I think on the flip side of that is yes, eventually he was caught, and he was he's being held accountable. He had been held accountable, you know, been placed in jail. Yeah, he had got away with so much in Australia, and even when you know he came to Florida, because nobody, you know, the women who were victims didn't want to have to f- go to court, didn't want to have to be, you know, come publicly. To have anything done. They they didn't want to do that. Yeah. And that makes it all the more hard be- to hear because then he just got to do it again. Yeah. And he got to keep doing it because these women just couldn't come forward. And I understand. I absolutely can understand why they would not want to do that. But definitely that makes it harder because he evaded. He got away with so much shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just because I think also, to the speed of technology then, you know, he, he's traveling across the country. Oh, yeah. And, you know, they're trying to keep up with him, but they can't. They can't. They're There's no way. Like one, he's always one step ahead of them. Yeah. They were yeah. they were at least a day or two behind him everywhere he went. It was just, yeah. It, that, was, that was hard. That was a rough one. So, yeah. That was a pretty, pretty crazy season i feel like there were a lot of hard impacting stories that we told yeah yeah like misty copsy still still no resolution for for her for her family still no updates on that that's rough yeah Yeah, that is yeah but you know we also had some fun we had our bonus episode with the (laughs) crimes and closets ladies beth and christy Uh, yes yeah we had fun yeah I I'm down to do it again. If they ever wanted to. Just putting it out there. Yeah, putting it out there. <laughs> no, yeah, I had a ton of fun there too. Yeah, and I like we kind of mentioned in the episode from yesterday. That is one of the things that's been the coolest part of all this is just reaching out, and making the connections. Yeah, we we still like we text each other. You know, yeah. Beth and Christy and, and you and I are on a group text that every once in a while we'll shoot things to each other and, uh, you know, just throw ideas off of each other and, and connect. And it that is probably the the best thing that I think that's come out of this yeah, more it, than And they have been else. right there along with us because I think they started the same time. Pretty much, but, yeah. You know, and so they experienced, this, you know, the same growing pains we did. Yeah. But it's nice and it's fun, you know, to uh, bounce ideas off other podcasters too. Yeah. February of last year, I've actually seen on Instagram probably about five or six other podcasts that we like follow and engage with that started at that same time. Yeah. I 
That's one of the things I'd love to know, especially with the quarantine in 2020, how many new podcasts, not yeah. just in true crime, but how many new podcasts started in 2020? I'd, I'd love lot. to see that, that stat. Yeah. I I bet it's a lot more than you would think. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it is yeah. because nobody, you know, everybody had nothing to do and we're all right. cooped up and. We all needed distractions. Yeah, because I'll say this. We started actually in December, uh, you know, because we set up, we recorded, but it was, you know. It took us a minute. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we kind of got the idea, knew what we were going to do, implemented some things, and then it took us a minute to get the basic equipment that we got. But even then, we, we, I... We started out with Blue Yeti mics, and I hated that sound because yeah. it was just, it echoed off everything. It picked up every sound. I mean, we could hear what our kids were doing downstairs from yeah. those microphones. And so, I mean, even before we started, we changed the microphones to just, uh, to, you know, simple microphone, USB microphones, actually. So, I mean, I, I, yeah, it took us a while to get going. Plus, the whole thing with Jess. Or just even both of us listening to ourselves, hearing ourselves talk. Yeah. It's yeah, a, yeah, it was hard. It was I, very hard. Like I, I don't know if I meant, but we probably recorded our episode six times, the first one, just to get it right, you know, to listen to us, to work yeah. it out. And even the format, you know, it wasn't, um, when we started, yeah, it was it was so chaotic. But, yeah. yeah, and then even like the Green River episode, It took us four times, I think, to record that. Three times. Yeah, but our I think our equipment was part partially to blame. Yeah, but it I it kept being too long too. Yeah. I was I don't know why, but we had it in our head that under an hour is gonna be the magic number and it had to everything had to be under an hour. Yeah. And the thing for us is we are we don't release every week. We release every two weeks because we're still working. We still work full time jobs. Of course, during <laughs> yeah. quarantine, we we weren't. Um, Bryce was working from home. I wasn't working at all, so we could have recorded every week. Yeah. Um. But you know, we we knew long term what could we sustain, and even every other week is hard sometimes. But it, you know, it was it was so hard to put everything into a format to to just discuss and. Yeah, we yeah. we hope that you guys see have seen the progression, like uh, you know can can see that we've changed things that weren't working, or we're trying new things out, or you know that we're just trying to get better over time. Uh, but, constructive yeah. criticism is always gladly accepted. Yeah, for sure. We we won't ever turn away constructive criticism. I uh, you know if there's something you guys think we should be doing different, let us know, or you you know cases anything like that or if we're doing it right let us know we, we want to yeah. know yeah so we definitely have appreciated everybody's feedback all the interaction that we get um from you know at any source facebook instagram twitter the website um we you know we still want to be able to to do these things and make things better and keep going so Season three is uh, going to resume April 2nd, and we are currently in the What the Fucks, um, which is a whole separate topic. We love the What the Fucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bryce doesn't necessarily, but what? I've made it into a family affair, so Bryce doesn't always have to record with me with the What the Fucks. No, but that you know what? That's another thing, too, here in season two is that we've had plenty of guests. Yeah, we've you had know, a lot of people. With Mara and Olivia, your brother. Yeah. Brandy. Brandy. Tyler. Tyler. Yeah. And we look forward, you know, anybody wants to come on, hey, uh, DM us or there's a message. We'd love to, you know, have, we love to have guests. Yeah. So. We love to throw things off of other people. It, it makes a conversation, I think, just a little, I don't know. We Rich, talk to richer. each other all the time. Yeah. Uh, we're so tired of each other. No, you know? <laughs> stop it. I'm joking. I'm just joking. But yeah, we we'd love to have somebody else come on anytime. We're open for it. So yeah, again, we just want to say thank you. And the code word this episode is going to be Bryce's favorite thing to say. <laughs> Very favorite. No. 
yes. Oh. Besides okay. Okay. And uh-huh. The other thing that Bryce always says is. I don't know. Uh, sweet. Sweet. Yeah. So that's going to be the code word to DM us on Instagram or Facebook to get entered into the $50 Amazon gift card for this episode. And again, <laughs> we just want to say we love you guys. We're happy to be here doing this and we hope that you guys are enjoying us. And if you are, make sure to rate us, make sure to let us know somehow. And until next time, please stay safe. Mask up. Don't go anywhere if you don't fucking have to. It's not worth it. No. And we just want you guys to know, even if you do go into the woods, we still like you. We just don't recommend it. All right, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye.